All right, trying to get back on this, time to get back on the trailer build here. Um, a lot's happened since the last video clip you've seen. Um, we went on a ride. The trailer did awesome. And I know I've said it, I've said it in the videos, and if you watch them, you'll see. I, I really hate showing it off before it's all done, but we didn't have a choice. We had to hurry up and go get our new machine and uh, use the trailer. It was good, man. She hauls great down the road. I was super impressed. Um, not like I had any doubts. I was just curious. And then, these being 3,500-pound axles, the big reveal, I guess for me, was we had both machines on the trailer. Obviously, the cabinet's not loaded. But I went and we, we checked the weight, and the weight on the axles is 5,380 pounds, 40 pounds, something like that. So basically, I've got 1,600 extra pounds um, that I do not intend on using completely. Obviously, we're going to put the generator and tool cart and all that stuff in here. Uh, but that won't be anywhere near 1,600 pounds. So I am very, very excited about that. Uh, this is definitely going to work awesome. Uh, these rims are still disgusting. But let me show you what we've done. Went to my buddies, got a rim. Now I promise you it did not look like this. Uh, it was all full of rust and so we got went and got it. Uh, I sandblasted it and primed it and we painted it with some uh, trusty bed liner in a can. And I am super excited. This is gonna be awesome. I may actually sand that down just a little bit around the rim, help the bead. Oh, lock in, but that is going to be the first of what's going to be all of the rims. Um, this is just a spare, but my plan is to get all those sanded down, sandblasted, and we'll paint to match this. Because, uh, I know I've talked about it a few times, but we've decided to go with uh, the roll-on bed liner for the actual final color of the trailer. Um, this burgundy is nice. We may do some accents. I may leave a couple things this color. But for the most part, it was, you know, painted with spray cans. So that roll-on bed liner will work perfect. Um, which brings us to today's project. I know you see when I walk through the garage here. We went and picked up a door yesterday. And this is off an old camper, if you couldn't tell. And I wasn't sure. I was looking at the newer style doors. And I was kind of going back and forth. So I yanked this off a junk camper. And brought it back and held it up to the trailer and I don't think I'll show you that picture but we're gonna be moving on this um, once we paint this we're gonna clean it up and I'm gonna paint it uh, with that bed liner the same color as the rim um, this texture will actually match the texture of the bed liner I think it's actually gonna look really cool uh, the aluminum will get covered up uh, and we're not gonna screw it in like it was to the camper we're gonna put rivets in here so as long as everything looks good we will rivet it in and then uh, give it a good paint job and that door will be done uh, there is no reason for me to make the doors on both sides the same because the generator is going to be in the other side and i don't need a complete full door to have access to any of that um, if i need to pull it out of there i can just open the back cabinet door which that's the steel for and we'll pull it out and work on it but just for quick access um, there's like four different doors on that camper and I want them to match so I'm gonna pull one of them off and put it on the other side but for today this is our project we're gonna get this cleaned up I'm gonna mark it out and we're gonna cut a hole oh that's nerve-wracking <laughs> we're gonna cut a hole on the side of the uh, the cabinet and get our door put in so let's get to work mm. All right, I skipped the process, but we're trying to keep this video as short as I can. Uh, the door is in. We marked it out, and it worked the first time. It didn't have to cut it twice. Got the door installed. The trim put on. I'm going to replace that lock cylinder with an actual. But here we are. We have side access. Yeah, I think I'm going to replace both of those, but that's not a hard thing to do. Yeah, we've got a side door. Uh, we're going to get it cleaned up and painted, but I'm not going to bore you with that part. So let's move on. So this video got affected most by my computer crash. Uh, there were quite a few clips after this where I explained a lot of stuff that I did. Um, so from here on out is going to be a summary and kind of catch you up to where we're at. 
All right, good morning. Uh, I know it's been quite a while since you had a last update, so we are gonna go over everything we've done on the trailer so far. Um, and just kind of catch everybody up to end out part 12 here. Uh, we're gonna start front to back. Obviously you can see we've painted it. Uh, I used about a gallon of uh, the Walmart brand. I think it's called Hercules truck liner. Um, I just rolled it on, super simple. I did use a can to spray in a few spots. Uh, got a cover for the winch. I know you guys did see the winch in one of the previous videos. Uh, it's functional. If you were watching, uh, I can't remember, a video or two ago, uh, we actually did use it to roll the razor on its side to put skid plate on, on the turbo. So that's that. Um, up under here, I just mounted a couple things to help hold the cords. This little guy here. It's been pretty convenient to keep it up off the ground. Um, the jacks are working really good. We've actually taken a couple a couple small trips and then we were back to Kentucky and back. Um, again, if you're subscribed to the channel or seen our videos, you already know that. So, let's see. Paint cords. Um, solar panel. Uh, on the side doors, we cut in. I think that's some of the video that I lost. We cut the steel out. I got some older camper doors off a of salvage camper put one on both sides this side I also put on a solar panel so it opens up gives us a view of the inside I'm gonna keep this little laundry strap right here every time I use it I'm working on organization trying to figure out better ways to do things um, for now I just got a bungee strap that holds the doors open here super simple um, We'll go over that here a little bit more. I could do a walk around. Um, hubcaps. But I didn't like the way the wheels looked, so I painted them, cleaned them up a little bit, painted them, and put some uh, cheap wall hubcaps on. Um, the E-Track, that was a quick thing. And I apologize if I go over this a second time because uh, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, ramps. We had to buy another set of ramps to make the two machines work. Uh, which was cool we tried for strapping them down for a while and i didn't like that that was kind of a pain in the butt so i made some ramp clamps i got a section e track from menards not ideal just what i had at the time a lot of this i threw together right before our last trip and made a clamp a little, little spinny deal and then that padlocks on if you can see down in there it's just the e track it's actually what they call it they call it a spare tire holder um that's what holds that down so can't get them up and they hold really well uh, we built this or I put that together right before the Kentucky trip so it's been uh, road proven anyways haven't done anything with the uh, I did finally <laughs> for, if you remember way way back I did a video and I did the electrical and that cord been hanging down well I finally just before Kentucky I zip tied that cord up out of the way so it's not hanging down anymore um, but got the trailer plate that was a big deal, finally. Took a few months to get an appointment. I haven't done anything with trailer lights to go behind it yet. Still working on that. Um, it's not super important. I uh, put fenders on. Uh, I went and had the 3 16th steel pre-bent and set it down on top of the, law, the wood. Um, the only problem I'm having with this is this came up a little bit. Now it really doesn't affect anything, but I've got bolts and washers. I just screwed this down. I think I'm gonna put the bolt through and suck it down with a bolt. But then we come over to this side. Uh, we got the same thing, the camper door over here with the strap. Uh, I know you notice a little bit of a difference here. Uh, we use these locks to lock the big doors. This one hasn't been opened since Kentucky, so. Uh, today was my day just to kind of air everything out and fire the generator up really quick and uh, make sure everything's good to go. And I'm, um, I'll show you on the other side, I'm working on an issue right now. Um, there's always a bunch of little things when you do these, It's you got to kind of fix as you go. So uh, I went and bought a nice light floor jack. We have, uh, if you can't tell, there's air. And the back corner on the other side, I'll show you in a minute, there's an air compressor. It's all run off a power strip at the back, just a magnetic power strip. Um, I know you guys have seen pictures and video of the inside of this 
while I was wiring things. Um, in here, I picked up a, see there's water in there, we'll get to that problem. Picked up an electric impact gun. So the plan is, and I know you guys, why, why do you plan for this? But if you don't plan, then you're not ready. Um, the plan is, if there's, a, if there's a flat tire, we roll off the side of the road, we get our extension cord out, we get our jack out, and blocks if we need it, and obviously a tire uh, wedgy thing, but we're not going to need that. Uh, I pull out my impact gun and I fire up the generator. Now you see a couple plugs here. This is a plug for power that goes in. This is currently plugged in to the, the, the power strip for the trickle charge for the batteries, for the 12 volt batteries. And it also, again, is powered to the air compressor, which is powered in the power strip. Um, so that you can unplug and plug into the generator if we need to run, like say, power on the side of the road or power where there is no shore power. So if we're on the side of the road and we need uh, to do a tire, uh, I just unplug it from there, plug it, actually I do it all from here. I unplug the power strip, it's a little buried right now, and plug it into the generator. And we fire up the generator. I haven't, I have not fired this up since before Kentucky, so hang on. And we had issues with it, so I had to put a new startup button here. Look at that Honda. All right. So now, if we were to unplug the power strip from the in input and put it on the generator, I would have power to this plug for an extension cord to go outside. And I do apologize, I'm gonna leave that run, it's been a while. Uh, also in here, well uh, maybe not right now. I'll start back up. Also in here I've got, you remember we used a wireless winch remote for the up and down for the jacks? Well, there's also a wired part and you know batteries die and i wanted to make sure that i was covering all on so i took the the wired part and ran it back around and put it on the bottom here so we can go up and down without the wireless remote um, i haven't used it yet but at least the options there just in case we need to uh to use it um, you see i did get some of that black bed liner on the boards it is my plan to eventually paint the boards, but again, a lot of this was thrown together right before our trip, and I've just kind of let it set since then. We've got a hundred other projects going on right now, but this is trailer catch up. So we've got, yeah, I talked about the air hose, the jack. Let's go back around here. I think the paint turned out okay. Could have been better, but... That was only one gallon stretched for the entire trailer. Um, I'll get it cleaned up later on this summer. So let's go into this door here. And the problem I've been having is, yeah, it's sitting in water right now, is the water coming in right here. And we put this, uh, I gotta clean up a couple spots. I didn't even paint the inside of this. Um, I put another layer of primer and then a rubber mat down here. And the water drains out from here, so that's been cool. But um, so I'm done with the floor in there, but I think I'm gonna paint these doors and you know paint the outside of this so it doesn't look so silly when you open it. But we put a, a really thick, thickest I could find weather stripping here. The problem is these doors at the end of the day are still flimsy and they've been letting in water. And fortunately, this is the only place it ends up. It ends up on top of this tote and then on top of that uh, box over there. Excuse me. Um, so I think what we're going to do is I'm going to get one of those little latches that will go over top. I think it's, it, it hooks and then you pull the thing tight and it locks down. And I'm going to try and bend it and make it to where it locks into this E-Track. I don't know. That's my thoughts. A lot of this has been thrown together as we go, obviously. So we'll figure it out. <clears throat> so. Uh, you'll see a toolbox in there that is just a top cabinet toolbox from Harbor Freight 
and I got a bunch of miscellaneous tools and you'll see those throughout the video series um, as we go as we talk about stuff but I uh, just know I got a bunch of tools I still got all my straps in this tote I bought like three other totes and I'm gonna try maybe today maybe tomorrow to, to kind of reorganize because that that tote is super heavy because I have all the tire straps in there all eight plus I have a bunch of regular ratchet straps and then all my e-track accessories um, I know there's a better way to organize this and uh, you know it's, it's it's always a project every every time we do something with it I'm gonna change a little bit so I'm pretty sure that covers everything oh and I welded on if you can see it up there in the crotch of the doors there that little circle deal I don't even know what you call it the tie down point is what I call it because that's what it's used for I put that on there and I'm using that tether machines uh, obviously they're all strapped down with tire straps but I wanted that just a little bit extra so from there I've got a one of these axle straps this one exactly that runs up around the back cage of the 900 and then for the turbo I just run the winch line out and hook it to it there's no tension on it and it's not meant to be uh, they just kind of ride there that's why I don't like tension on winches I mean if you tie your stuff down with your winch I guess good for you but uh, I don't like that constant yank on the winch winch line um, but it's there just in case so if every one of the or I guess two of the tire straps were to fail and the machine were to start bouncing backwards the winch line would catch it and it wouldn't go off the back of the trailer and hopefully by then I figured out what's happening um, so that's where that's at oh uh, let's see I don't think there's anything else that we've done been kind of on pause for the moment we after we got home from our trip it was just kind of back to work and school and you know all our other life stuff so uh, the next thing we're gonna do to it uh, just to kind of forecast what's happening here uh, is lighting at the end of every trip we always end up loading up at night the night before we go and it's always at 10 o'clock right before we leave at 1 30 in the morning and this time we got lucky I had a street light I guess it's called a street light in the campground to park underneath parking lot light and that made it really nice unfortunately that's not going to be the case so my plans are to run a piece of angle straight up 18 inches 24 inches something like that on both corners to give me lighting it's kind of down at an angle towards where the tires would be so one on each corner then i want two underneath here those will be super simple. I'll just screw them to the bottom of the deck board. Um, just for uh, hooking up purposes and whatever else we need under here. Then I want two on right here. So one here and one over there pointed back at the tires for this machine or whichever one's here. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to put it here. I may relook at that idea when, it, when the time comes, but for now I'm not thinking about here, I'm thinking about just putting on the side of the trailer. The only reason I'm apprehensive about it is because it makes the trailer a little bit wider, but if we go with a nice, I'm thinking like a four inch or six inch bar, it shouldn't make it too much wider, but let's move on. And of course we gotta do, I wanna do the, uh, we don't have to, but I'm gonna do the, the DOT lighting on the side of the trailer too. Uh, all it had was two tail lights and you know it worked, but I would like to have a light on the front corners and then the front corners up there just so I can see where the trailer's at and then the back corners too obviously we'll put the red ones like you like you see <clears throat> okay so one two three sets of light the next set of light is going to be one on each side of the tires facing down it's going to be a ground light um, for changing tires on the side of the highway if you haven't noticed I, I really like to prepare for that um, you don't want it to happen but we are prepared for it we have a brand new spare tire on a rim that i cleaned up so if we have one spare i'm hoping to have two but you know we'll get there so one either side of the tires both sides and then i want two at the back for work lights i don't i mean it'd be super easy to put them here and face them back um, just as a backup light or a work light or whatever you want to call it um, i don't have a lot of plans for a backup camera but having lights back here would definitely make things easier now how are we going to control all these lights well glad you asked right here i'm going to build a harness 
and I run it basically in the same way I ran this one uh, down and around and back and through uh, with zip ties of course uh, I'm gonna put a panel right here and I'm not 100% sure on which panel yet uh, but there's gonna be individual switches there'll be switches for the work lights for on top of the trailer a separate switch for the lights that go down I think I'll run those four and these two on the same circuit just because it won't affect anything if you're on the side of the road but you sure as heck don't want to turn your back facing lights on if it's uh you know three in the morning on the side of the highway that would be uh, super illegal and very rude so the work lights on the trailer are going to have a separate switch for the work lights that go down oh i'm sorry <laughs> and the obvious one cabinet lights i forgot all about those i'm gonna put a couple lights in here just so we can get in here so we can just open this cabinet flip a switch cabinet lights turn on that will be on its complete separate circuit but you've seen the fuse block that i put in here so that's gonna hold all that and probably more more than i need uh, but for now that's the plan um a lot of cleanup i you haul this down the road and even even before it hits the road it just sucks the dirt up off the ground so lots of cleanup i'm still going to close off these holes at some point just to give it a little bit more structure and make it look a little bit nicer too uh, but that doesn't take much more than just you know grinding it off and throwing a piece and i do still want to put that angle on here to cover this up i guess <laughs> whatever you want to call it and run that back and help with the doors but the door seal thing that's like my number one priority for trailer projects at the moment um, everywhere else in the trailer was fine but you could tell because of course we always hauled in the rain and and you could tell that it uh was coming in pretty good right there at the seals and there's nothing else we can do i don't think um if i can't get it to hook to the e-track though i'm just gonna weld a little tab here or something um the ramps oh yeah one thing we did to the ramps laura and i spent a nice 10 degree afternoon doing is putting rubber on either end of it so it straddles the e-track and it doesn't tip around so that would have been nice to have a, a little while ago but i digress so we'll end part 12 here <clears throat> uh, thanks for watching i uh, appreciate you guys i uh, appreciate you watching our videos and subscribing and uh, we're definitely going to continue on with the trailer uh, it's not quite a, as big a push so i wouldn't expect a video anytime soon um in fact, this may be the last trailer video because everything else is just kind of little, like I say, I'm, the lights and the circuits and whatnot, and, you know, I, I may cover that at some point, but, uh, anyways, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, we'll see you next time.